Good morning there friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we got a 2002 Jeep Liberty and we're going to be replacing the radiator in this bad boy today. And I'm just going to kind of take you through the steps here as I go through it in case you ever have to find yourself doing one yourself. First thing we've done so far is we've uh, drained the coolant. And I'll go ahead and tell you what our first step is going to be. I've done one of these before. We're going to pop this grill out, okay? Looks like there's about four screws across the top. I think there might be a couple hid down in here that may just snap in. Pop the grill out, and we're going to go ahead and pop this upper uh, radiator, radiator support bracket off of here. It actually separates. And of course, we'll have to pull these two screws out of the um, uh, hood latch assembly here. So let's go ahead and get started and get that knocked out. Now with our grill removed and our uh, upper core support bracket, we will continue on now by disconnecting our upper radiator hose. We'll go ahead and pull it loose on both ends and lay it out of the way. Um, go ahead and disconnect our overflow tube. And then we'll uh, take our fan off. We'll disconnect our connector going to our electric fan. And it looks like there's uh, at least two bolts. I do believe here, one on each side. One down here about where my finger is and one over here on this side. We'll go ahead and disconnect that and remove those three items. Now with the electric fan out of the way, now what we want to do is go ahead and disconnect our transmission lines. You can see I'm pointing right there to one of them and there's one down here down low. Uh, it looks like a 5 8 or 16 millimeter wrench ought to work to disconnect that. I'll, I'm also looking at this little sensor right over here. So if we can, uh, right there, that little sensor. It's not really connected to anything, but the way that it's sticking out there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and uh, get it out of the way because I don't want to break it when I start uh, pulling this radiator out of here. So we'll pull the 10 millimeter bolt uh, off right here and just lay it out of the way. Okay, friends, we got the uh, transmission lines disconnected and we made sure we held on to our little O-rings. There's little O-rings here that go on the into these lines here so make sure you don't lose them in case you don't get any new ones uh went ahead and disconnected the lower radiator hose uh, removed it out of the way uh, while we were down there now let's bring our attention around here to the front what we're going to do now is go ahead and uh there's a 10 millimeter bolt here holding the condenser to the radiator and one right over here so there's one on each side we're going to go ahead and remove them and we're going to take our upholstery tool and pop these little push pins off here, one up, two on each side. And then we should be able to access a bolt that actually attaches, there should be a bolt right behind here that attaches the radiator to the core support. So let's get that done. Okay, after removing the two bolts, what we did is we actually pulled up on the uh, condenser, uh, moved it straight up, and it was held in by some clips at the bottom and then just pulled it off of the clips. So now it's just, it's just kind of floating in here, and we're going to try to just leave it like that. Now what we've done, we went ahead and, like I was telling you, we pulled the uh, pulled these push pins out, and now we can see the head of that bolt right there. So there should be one on each side. I'm going to go ahead and zip those out, and that should free up the radiator. Now with the bolts out that uh, hold the radiator to the core support, we're going to go ahead and actually remove the radiator. Now it's a little bit tricky, because these ears stick out quite a bit on this radiator and uh, we have these two uh, AC lines going to the condenser that we've got to maneuver around because we want to leave the we don't want to disable the air condition just to do a radiator we want to leave this condenser in here just floating so what we're going to do is we're going to slide this all the way this way until we till we clear these lines okay and then at that point we should be able to finagle it and just lift it straight up out of here now with the radiator out we want to make sure we take all of the uh like rubber grommets and stuff like that off of this radiator because we're going to take it back to the parts store this is actually a warranty job and uh, we want to take all of our hardware and things off of here before we take it up there so we got little rubber grommets at the bottom for the radiator to sit in make sure we remove all of this stuff and keep it here at the shop while we go and exchange the radiator so we'll work on that we'll make sure we got this thing good and clean 
We'll go pick up our new radiator and then we'll get started on the installation. Okay friends, hey, we just got back from the parts store with our new radiator and what we're going to do now is go ahead and uh, take our grommets and reinstall them on the radiator after we unpackage it. And we've got a new gal fresh gallon of antifreeze and some transmission fluid to top off the uh, transmission fluid since we took the lines loose. So we'll go ahead and from this point we'll just reverse the procedure of disassembly until we get this thing back together. Okay, friends, we got everything bolted back in place now. Everything's hooked up, radiator hoses and everything. And I want to show you this coolant bleed right here on your uh, upper neck on the uh, engine block here. There's a little hex set screw there. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, back this out. Go ahead and remove it all the way. And we will begin filling it. We've got our little uh, funnel here, our no spill funnel hooked up here on our reservoir. And we'll go ahead and start filling this up with coolant with a 50-50 mix and then we'll crank this thing up in a few minutes. Now friends, we've already reinstalled our little uh, bleed screw here and we've got our funnel here at about midway point. Actually it's still bringing a little bit in right now. But I'm going to go ahead and crank the vehicle up and we'll let this thing run until it gets up to operating temperature and we'll make sure we got our coolant level set correctly and then we'll take it out for a test drive here and just a little bit. Okay friends, hey we just got back from a test drive and uh, got this thing up to operating temperature. We've already double checked the uh, coolant level, check for any minor leaks of any kind and everything's good to go. Hey it's time to uh, call the customer and let him know he can come pick up his vehicle. Friends I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to watch this little video today. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time. Take care.